Stick around because I'm going to show you how imprecise coding can make your players feel precise through better player feedback and stuff. Hey everyone, my name is Artindi, and in 2D platformer games, and in most other games that include jumping as a mechanic, which is pretty much all of them, often the character will need to jump off a ledge. Because computers are super precise, it can become frustrating for the player when they press the jump button one nanosecond after the character's hitbox has left the edge of the platform, resulting in no jump at all. So I'm going to show you how to fix this problem in Godot, as well as one other problem that we'll get to later. Keep in mind, this logic should work for many other game engines as well. Okay, so there isn't actually a step one. I just have a few things to explain, and I felt like that would be a good segue. In order to fix the problem, we have to make it so that the player can jump even after the character's hitbox has left the platform. This sounds like it shouldn't be a thing, but the extra time after they leave the platform where they can still jump should be too small for the player to detect but just enough that if they miss it, they will know that it was because they were too late rather than the computer being too precise. It just gives them a slightly larger window of opportunity to jump at what they believe to be the last possible moment. This is called coyote hang time because of its resemblance to when the wily coyote from Looney Tunes would run off a cliff and comically stay in the air for a few seconds before falling to the ground far below. In order to make coyote hang time, you will need to rearrange a few things in your code till you have the ability to jump regardless if you are on the ground or not, and make a new boolean variable, boolean meaning true or false, that will decide if you can jump. In this example, I added a variable called can jump even though we may not be touching the ground. What? It's a, it's a great variable name. You'll never wonder what it does. Don't, don't judge me. Now, instead of adding this variable as another condition in the same if statement, instead add it as a condition in the block. So after you press the jump button, then check to see if you can jump. If so, jump. You will see why this is important later. The next thing you will want to do is create an if statement that will be true when you are not touching the ground. If you are using the isOnFloor function, you can do it like this. Now in this if statement, have a function call. Let's name this function coyote time. In your coyote time function, you want to set the variable that allows jumping to false. However, without any time delay, this will result in it becoming false instantly, solving nothing. The key to your success is this line of code. It will suspend the progress of the function until a procedurally created timer times out. The amount of time is set here. However, it only affects this function, so your physics process function will continue to run normally. Now just don't forget to set your variable that allows you to jump back to true every time you touch the ground again. Altogether, what happens is this. You'll leave a platform and the coyote time function is called. After the delay set by you times out, you can no longer jump. But until then, jumping is allowed even if you are not touching the ground. Now on to one more better jumping thing. No one likes it if you press the jump button just one pixel before you're actually touching the ground resulting in no jump at all. The way to fix this is to add a timer that will remember if the jump button was just pressed. Then, when you next come in contact with the ground, you will jump. Again, the timing is so slim that players will not even notice, but they will notice if they are not jumping when they think they should be. Add another boolean variable that will keep track of whether you just hit the jump button. You might could call it jump was pressed. Set it to a default false, then set it to true anytime you hit the jump button. This is why we wanted to have the jump condition be on a separate line, so that jump was pressed can be set to true even if you are in the air. Next, call a function that we will name remember jump time. This function will look almost identical to your coyote time function, except you're going to set the jump was pressed variable back to false after the timer runs out. Now under the condition of if on floor, make your hero jump if the jump was pressed variable is true. With this, if you hit the jump button while in the air, and then touch down within the time you have specified, your hero will still jump. Adding these two things will greatly improve your player feedback and they will think your game is awesome to play, even if your game is super boring. Response and controls are good controls. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any other tutorials you wish someone would finally get around to making, please let me know and I'll be sure to pass on the message to someone who cares, or you know, maybe I'll make it. Thanks for watching though, and have a great day.